Hi, I'm Kelly. As a life coach, I've noticed that the work I do with people isn't about their relationships or their jobs. It isn't about their kids or even how to find a way to get all the laundry done. All the work we do together centers around finding the answer to one simple question. What does it mean to live a fulfilled life? Join me as I explore this question and more in conversation with others in the Fulfilling Life interviews with me, Kelly Dahl, as your host. Hello, I'm Kelly, and today we're talking with Erin Goodman about what it means to live a fulfilled life. Erin, I'm so thrilled to have you here as a friend and a colleague to talk about this fascinating topic of what it means to live a fulfilled life. I would love for you to start by sharing with everybody watching a little bit about you, who you are, and the work that you put out into the world. Great. Thanks, Kelly. Um, so I think we have to start by saying that this is my first Skype interview, and it was only Yay. because you asked me so nicely <laughs> that I came out to do this little Skype debut. I've been so uh, intimidated by this medium, but um, you made it very friendly and easy, and so I'm thrilled to be sharing this with you. Um, good, but good. So, so who I am and what I do, um, that's such a big question that I always have, huh, but... Um, I'm, I'm a minister and a yoga teacher and a healer. And someone just said this week, you know, um, we're slashers. You know, we have like artists slash teachers slash whatever. And, and that sort of has fits me. But those are the three, um, the big things, the big areas that I'm working in right now in my life. Um, and I do my work in person. I work with couples who are getting married to help plan their weddings and officiate their ceremonies and guide them through the process and blessing babies and houses and all kinds of wonderful things. Um, and then I do work online, one-on-one -on -one with clients, and I lead some classes for families, and, and then I write a blog, and so it just sort of all kind of weaves together. It all has sort of an, uh, a yogic um, overarching uh quality to it. I'm not directly teaching yoga in studios anymore. Um, I do retreats and little classes here and there, but it's, it's sort of all woven into what I do. And, so. and I can speak as a consumer of your beautiful goods that it, it, it's that, that yogic awareness is, I think of it as it's breathing throughout everything that you do. And, and there's, there's a, there's a peaceful breath in what you put out into the world that is so calming and refreshing but at the same time very real and um very relatable which is both calming and reassuring and refreshing and all those wonderful things but still bound up in the healing and the yoga piece of it um so yes you're a slasher but you weave those things together so beautifully i don't think of it as slashing more as as weaving maybe this uh -huh. is, I, I couldn't help but think like you're a slasher my first response was like a slasher movie no you right. you, you weave this together it's not dividing and that you breathe them together you do that so well in yeah. as an observer of your your beautiful work so we're talking about this very big topic of fulfillment and what fulfillment is. Um, so I want to start by hearing how you look at this and what does it mean to live a fulfilled life for, for Aaron? Yeah. And I, I was reflecting on this and I've been kind of talking with my children about it and, and just thinking about this a lot. Um, it is a big, a big juicy question, but if, you know, something that came up for me as I was thinking about it is, if I won the lottery tomorrow and all my physical needs were met, I had all the resources to buy whatever I wanted and so I had no fears and no worries about money, I wouldn't necessarily be fulfilled. Fulfillment to me is something different. And what for me it is as a creative person is taking these ideas 
that wake me up in the night and say, wouldn't it be awesome if we had this, or we could do this, or we could make this, whether I'm thinking about in my own family or in my life or something I'd like to add to my children's education experience or create for families around the world. And then it's bringing those ideas to fruition that brings me a feeling of fulfillment. And when I can do that in a way that the whole process from start to finish is one that's in alignment with my values and how I want to live my life, then we're really talking fulfillment. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and it's a process too, right, of, of being in that work and listening to the work that wants to come forth and then moving forward in a way that's in alignment with what you believe. And it's not about um, fulfilling your basic needs. It's, it's a deeper need within you. Uh, it's really, it's, I, love, I love the way that you've put that. Really speaks to the way that I do my work as well. And I know lots of people can relate to that just coming from here from, from well you can't see me I'm too low coming from here your heart I'm touching my heart that's that's where it comes from in the middle of the night um, and so how how do you go about living that fulfilled life what are some of the things that you do to, to bring that forward I think one of the most important things and you know I've been practicing yoga for you know, over 10 years 12 13 years in different ways. But I think in the last year, I've come into a much deeper practice and um, letting go of the form of what it looks like, but really coming into a daily practice of sitting still, of tuning in, listening to my heart, getting my guidance from inside instead of looking externally for what's the next move that I should be taking. Um, and it's not always pretty, it's not always graceful, you know, sometimes it's a lock myself in the bathroom, kind of take a few deep breaths, and where where do I want to go from here you know, in this moment, um, which is crazy with my children, and dinner's not ready, and, you know, my husband's going to be late, and, okay, where do I want to go from here? <laughs> um, so finding that, that practice that grounds me in the morning, and again in the afternoon, and again in the evening, and then the little pieces in between of resetting every time I need to, this is what is allowing me to bring more to fruition into the world. Yeah, and I, I don't I don't hear you you saying it's it's long yoga retreats or it's an hour meditation in the morning. Sometimes that those three minutes locked in the bathroom so that you can't hear the noise outside the door so that you can breathe back and connect to what's going on inside of you as, as, as your foundation and hearing what's inside of you as your foundation to keep you on that path to fulfillment and, and knowing that you're, you're moving towards that. Absolutely. And, and the other big one, which I've taught for years, but, you know, again, practicing on a deeper level is intention, setting intention. And then going back to my intention. So whether it's launching a project or doing something with my family, planning the holidays, you know, whatever. But what is the intention? What do we want to feel? And then as we start to get off course, to be able to have that to come back to. To say, well, we said we wanted to feel joyful and happy and connected. Is that how we're feeling right now? You know, and then pull it back. And so that's been another one of really taking some of these things that I have taught and practiced in the yoga studio for years, but now taking them into everyday life, constantly coming back to what's my intention, how do I want to feel, where's my best direction to go from here, um, which I guess could sound like a lot of work, maybe to some people, but it's, um, it's what's simplifying my life and making things get easier for me is by that non-action that sitting that reflecting is allowing what action does come forward to be more effective mm -hmm. to be less loud and cluttered and you know, disorganized yeah. yeah and it and it's and it's really connecting your feelings and your values to your intentions 
on on a regular basis. And one thing that I that I really admire in what you do is is you spoke of we. And I know you've done this for yourself so much, but you are you're a great model of involving your entire family in those conversations too, and sharing that message with other people. Um, for those of us who are moms and and are, are helping these little people hopefully grow with a mindfulness and and thinking about what's grounding me, what are my intentions here, what do what feeds me instead of all of the primary colored plastic beeps and bobs that they're exposed to and pressured to feel like they want to, but taking that time to really get in touch with what is coming from inside of you. And then teaching that with your family as well. Um, so that gets into a bit of, of the fact, the real fact that life doesn't, we aren't, we don't have this life that's set up to be reflective and, and living from our intentions all the time, right? So what are some of the things that are the obstacles in your path that get in your way from, from, taking those moments to get back to your, your intentions or what's most important? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. So I, um, I have started to speak publicly about this and, um, and I'm comfortable doing so now, but I, um, this past year was, um, I was diagnosed with ADD, um, as a 38 year old mother of you for the first time hearing those letters put together and understanding what they mean. Um, and that has been a big obstacle for me um, for most of my life, uh, adult life, I guess. I didn't, I didn't have the classic experience that um, I ta- tend to think of with children not being able to sit still and not being able to pay attention to school. I was an A-plus student from kindergarten through college. Um, that was not my issue. Um, what the issue for me has always been is making decisions, knowing where to put my attention, where to put my energy, and this thing I call like splatter, where I would kind of go out in five different directions at once and really be just internally spinning around and not being clear. Um, so I have been doing a lot of work this year with medical professionals and counselors and coaches and my soul friends who will sit and listen to me and as I process and coming to terms with what that means and what I mean. And I think what you said, Kelly, was really important about fulfillment being a higher level than basic needs. But if we're not meeting our basic needs, we can't get to that higher level. Mm-hmm. And so for me, you know, making sure my kids have clean socks enough to get through the week, making sure I have the supplies I need to pack their lunches for five days, um, making sure I have a meal plan in place. I did not have these things. Two years ago, three, when my daughter started public school, kindergarten, um, three years ago, she's in second grade now, I did not have that level of organization in my life. And I struggled tremendously through that first year of needing to have her on schedule and be in places and be prepared. Um, yeah, you know that one? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. So and, that and has, it can be self sabotaging in in and I think I, I mean I, I love your work because I definitely relate to that feeling of of being in many places at once and, and passionate about many things and then the things like having a meal plan and making sure that the laundry is done because that's not passionate, that doesn't there <laughs> there's no systems for that, but then when that piece isn't there, it is it is a need to have as a foundation and a structure so that then those passions can happen. And I think as a creative person, I resist structure and form and rules and being in certain places at certain times. I sort of I've always rebelled against that. Mm-hmm. And just in the past, you know, couple of years I've come to peace with having that in place allows me to be creative in other areas. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to be creative with the children's lunches every day. Right. They don't need to be creative with their lunch. They want to know what's going to be in the lunchbox. So 
Right. We've gotten very predictable. We've gotten very predictable with dinner that, you know, Monday night is meatball night and Thursday night is taco night. And um, that's, I found my children actually take a lot of comfort in that yeah. predictability. And then now that I've been working on getting those underlying systems in place, I find my work productivity has increased tremendously. And just my general happiness and being able to connect with people and do things that I really want to be doing on that fulfillment level. Um, and also taking the time to appreciate the little things, to, to stop myself and mindfully pack my children's lunches and remind myself what a gift it is that I get to have them in my life and I get to do this and talking a little note in there. Not every day, not to prove to anyone else that I'm super mom or anything right. like that, but to have that heart connection with my children mm -hmm. has been very, very powerful. Yeah. And it, it's, it, you know, it's efficient to have these, these systems just from, from a day to day standpoint, but it's also so efficient for our energy too, so that we aren't hitting that, that four o'clock hour of, Oh crap, I have no idea what's for dinner. I don't even know what groceries I have in my house. Can I, can I scrounge together something with a can of garbanzo beans and a couple of eggs? You know, <laughs> and, and those moments still come up for me at least, yeah. but knowing that when those systems are there, that without get, going through that explosive freak out point where a lot of energy is expended, that energy is, is saved for the creative work for the things that I love to do. And, and that's what I hear you saying, too, that as a person who now identifies as having ADD and being able to name it, you it possibly is coming through even more strongly for you, the need for those systems to be in place so that the ADD doesn't control your life at all. It's a piece of who you are um, instead of everything that you are. Right. Definitely. And reaching out and getting help was was big and was hard and, um, and labels are hard and you know for me to I, I, don't, I still don't comfortably wear that label um, but having that information and reading up about strategies for people who have ADD can do these things to improve their lives and then I started doing those things and my life started getting easier <laughs> you know so. Yeah. It was helpful for me to get that diagnosis and to move forward with that information um, has been really wonderful. And like you said, I still have my moments where I hit, you know, 4 or 5 p.m. I have no plan. I have no dinner. Um, the other big thing for me is, you know, I've always been a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. So when I hit those places, I was not ever able to say, let's get in the car and go to McDonald's. Yeah. That... I couldn't because I didn't, I don't believe in feeding my children McDonald's or I don't, you know, and I have come to a place now where there are t days where I say, thank you for McDonald's. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I love that because I can share too that this is the real piece of you. I had a moment the other day where I was almost going to post something on Instagram and I know you're an Instagram person and it was I was thinking of it as a confessional, taking a picture of my kids eating their Wendy's. Um, and I couldn't do it because I wasn't at that place yet. But, you know, I like that thing. Thank goodness that that exists because there are days that it just feeds everybody, literally. And, you know, it, it, it does make things a lot easier. Um, I usually say a little, like, I'm grateful that this is here. I'm grateful that I don't make this choice every day. I like that. that that's my little fast food blessing as I'm going through it. You know, just I'm, I'm so incredibly grateful that in this moment there's going to be warm food coming in this window to feed my children. Yeah. And I'm so very grateful that I can make the choice not to do this every day yeah. or multiple times or whatever it is. And right. that has shifted my perspective and allowed me to receive again it's help it's help it's help coming in when right. I need it in certain moments and then the next day is a new day I start again with that sitting with that intention with what do we want to experience today yeah 
and and I hear I hear that the obstacles come, right? But they they definitely come. But you you go back to that that creating your intention and moving from a place of what is the intention and maybe the intention on those McDonald's nights is that there's not a lot of yelling and that there's not there aren't cranky kids who get overly hungry there aren't there all of those things you don't that you don't want in your house um, are more important at that moment than some chicken nuggets <laughs> right right there but and in that moment that takes precedence over my values that say I prefer local, organic, you know, homegrown kind of meals, because I do prefer those. But I think that's sort of the prioritizing that I was talking about. I used to not be able to prioritize. So in that moment, I would be feeling all this emotion. My children would be getting upset. They're hungry. Their energy's rising. I would still be holding so tightly to this value of like, I should be able to do this. I should be able to make this. And this resource would be over here that I could partake in and I would not be able to accept it. And now I've come into a place where I can feel this is happening. Oh, I've been here before. I know what this is. I'm not going to be here forever, but I'm here right now. Right. And the softest, most gentle, most peaceful way to move forward is right over here. And thank you for being here. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, yes, which is, it's, it, that's how you talked about fulfillment too. And I think that, that tight feeling, and I could see it in your body, which is a beautiful thing about these Skype interviews. You know, you went in with those shoulds and my kids should be eating local meat and pasteurized beef, not this, whatever it is, right? Like you tighten up from those shoulds and those expectations instead of listening to what really guides you and what is your, your true deepest intention, which then even just describing the situation, your shoulders then opened up a little bit and you were moving from a place that was more peaceful with more breath and, and, um, feeling much better. Wonderful. Erin, it has been so wonderful to speak with you about all of this. And I, I know that just reading your writing and, and your work helps me to understand fulfillment in, in a way that is meaningful and touches me and helps me understand myself. And I know that is true for so many others as well. Can you please remind the viewers um, where they can find you and any last parting wor- words you would like to share. Sure. Um, on erinbidman.com is my home base on the web. And from there you can find all my other um, outposts, Instagram, you know, Facebook, I'm everywhere, but erinbidman.com is the place to find me. And last parting words. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this was incredible. I feel, um, expanded from having this experience of coming in to Skype with a little bit of trepidation and not sure how it would be. Um, but I think that is part of this whole process of leading a fulfilled life is sometimes stepping into the uncomfortable. And when you have someone um, warm and welcoming who kind of reaches out and holds your hand and takes you with her, it's all the better. So, so thank you for letting me be part of this and for the series. I'm very excited for all your other interviews to get to check those out. All right. Thank you, Erin. Thank you. Thanks for being here and thanks for sharing your, your thoughts with us today. And we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.